You've got Cleveland plus seven at Cincinnati. I love that. Okay. Okay, so here's the logic on this. First of all, I think Cincinnati is done. Now, obviously, they're eliminated. But I saw after they lost the Chiefs game, Jamar Chase gave an interview at his locker after he was shut down by Legereus Sneed, the single biggest snub of the Pro Bowl. Everyone's like, Josh Allen should have been a Pro Bowler. Legereus Sneed's going to be first-team all-pro corner, doesn't make the Pro Bowl. Give me a break. Um, after saying essentially, or Jamar Chase not essentially, saying, uh, yeah, I don't know what Sneed's issue is. He clearly don't want to fight me. It's like, yeah, buddy. He's trying to win a division. You're trying to keep your playoff hopes alive. And then when... When he said that, T. Higgins started laughing with him. This is, the Cincinnati went into that game with the playoffs alive. They had to win to stay alive. Had they won, they'd be alive this weekend. They're playing the team that ended their season in this building less than a year ago. They had a 10-point lead. They lost, and after the game... The two best players on their offense are in such high spirits, they're laughing and giggling about fighting or not fighting the opposition. That tells me this team, in a meaningless Week 18 game against Cleveland, is not going to have the juice they need to cover seven points. I'm not sure how much Higgins or Chase will play. I know Cleveland... And Jim Schwartz, they run the least creative defense in football. They basically just line up and play every single snap, which, why does that matter? Because for your backups, it's the easiest scheme to insert a backup into. So you won't have the talent of the other guys, but like Steve Spagnolo's scheme, the Chiefs D coordinator, super complicated, and you saw... In that Packers game, Demonze, when they were already without one linebacker, Nick Bolton, and then Drew Tranquil went down, and then the safety went down, and they're trying to do all these exotic blitzes and things Jay they Lowe can't with backups, up. and they just, right, and they just got cooked <laughs> because that's right. a very complex defense. Cleveland is not that. Cleveland's just a plug-and-play essential defense. I'm getting seven points. I understand it's Jeff Driscoll playing quarterback or whoever the hell. I think it's Jeff Driscoll. I don't even know who the Browns. I, Jeff Driscoll's playing for somebody right now. Yeah, I don't care. Cle and so Cleveland's locked into the five. Cincinnati's locked out. I'm getting seven points. I Cleveland might win outright. They're certainly not getting blown out. Give me the full seven. I'll take Cleveland. Uh. This, this game doesn't matter for Cleveland. Their spot's already secured. No, they they can't fall to the six. They can't move yeah, up I to didn't the... Know they Flacco can't win the division. I, it, well, <laughs> right, well, if he was playing, buddy, he wouldn't be get, they wouldn't be getting seven points yeah, that's, that's, if that's they were playing like, their starters. Next, you got New, New England minus one and a half uh, versus the Jets. Might be Belichick's last game ever as a Patriot head coach. He's not losing to the Jets for the first time in eight years. It's simple. The Patriots have beaten the Jets 15 straight times. Belichick despises the Jets. It could be his last game. He's not tanking. The Jets, meanwhile, they're going with Simeon again. And the Jets coaches know we're back next year because Aaron demanded it. So there is... They, they, they sneaky would like a better draft pick. Do you think Belichick gives a damn about the draft pick when he might not be the one making it? This is a very, very simple uh, uh, math plus the added stuff. Salah's the worst coach in the last 20 years with extended rest. Detroit minus three and a half versus Minnesota. Okay, so Detroit is 95% locked in to the three seed. And Minnesota has to win to have a chance for the postseason. So in that regard, you would think this is, you know, a Minnesota spot. However, Detroit, the way Detroit moves up to the two line is if Dallas and Philly lose. 
I don't think that's going to happen, but they can't go into the game assuming it's impossible. So they're not going to rest golf. They're, you know what I mean? They're going to play at least their guys for the beginning of the game. I think Dan Campbell is so livid about last week that, and Dan Campbell desperately does not want to go into the playoffs losing two in a row after having such a good season up to this point. I also think that the Vikings quarterback situation has turned full-blown disaster on them. And it's in Detroit. It will be a celebration for the fans at being able to, you know, root, go into a game knowing our team won the division for the first home game that they've played in 30 years it's under those circumstances. Game. Giants plus five and a half versus Philly. All the home teams. Yeah, so, oh, that, well, except for Cleveland. Except for but your yeah, first Cleveland's one. Cleveland's in yeah. Cincinnati. Yep. So here's the Giants plus five and a half logic. It's not only that Dable, I think, this team, you know, likes him and plays hard for him. We saw him play hard two weeks ago against the Giant against the Eagles, saw him play hard this week against the Rams. It's also that I think Dallas is going to get out to a quick, early, big lead against Washington. When that happens, Demonze, I think Philly pulls their guys. Jalen is banged up. Jalen is, you know, Devontae Smith is obviously hurt. I think that Philly is going to go into this game saying we're playing our starters. And if Dallas is up 17-3 on Washington, then all of a sudden this game becomes totally meaningless for Philly. If Dallas wins, Philly's the five seed no matter what. So I could see a scenario where Jalen Hurts is pulled and Marcus Mariota comes in. Is Mariota the backup there? I think he's the backup there. Uh, and you have Philly take their guys out while the Giants are still fighting. And because of that, I this is kind of contingent on Dallas getting out to an early lead, but I believe da they're playing Sam Howell because Jacoby Brissett's still hurt. I think Dallas does get out to an early lead, so the Giants... Uh, you know, uh, or I'm sorry. So the Eagles lose motivation and start sitting their guys. Giants plus five and a half in a game. I think the Giants can win outright. Next, you got Miami plus three versus Buffalo. Yeah. So, uh, so here's where we're at on this. The Bills have not been good in night games. They've lost, I think, seven in a row. But that's not the rationale for this. The rationale for this is quite simple. I think Miami, even with the defensive injuries, is better than Buffalo. They're at home and they're getting three points. I also, oddly, if Pittsburgh and J if Pittsburgh plays Saturday, if Pittsburgh loses, Buffalo's locked into the playoffs, okay? I don't think Pittsburgh's going to lose against the Baltimore backups, against Huntley and company. But if Pittsburgh does lose, I will no longer like this bet. If Buffalo goes into the game knowing, worst case scenario, we're in the playoffs as the 6 or the 7, best case, we win the division and can play free and easy, then I think Buffalo might win the game. But if, if I'm right that Pittsburgh is going to beat Baltimore on Saturday and the Bills and Sean, now they also need, for this to be true, you also need Jacksonville to win Sunday, but Jacksonville's a favorite. They're playing the Titans. The, if Pittsburgh wins Saturday, Buffalo will go to bed Saturday night knowing it's probably win and we're the two seed, lose, and we're out of the playoffs entirely. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.